a quick walkthrough uh, for the first couple of chapters of Perspective Made Easy by Ernest Norling. And let's take a look at some of the vocabulary, some of the rules of perspective drawing as it starts out in this book. It's more of a simple book. Uh, I learned from it. I, I did say in my uh, youth that this was a very formative book that really set me on the course of drawing. Once I found out all these techniques, it was pretty uh, amazing to me. And you sit drawing, you say perspective. It's the artist's business to be able to draw an object so that it will look solid and not flat like the surface of paper which is to be drawn. In doing so, the artist employs what we call perspective. So we're taking the, that flat brick shape and we're giving it a 3D aspect. The most important thing that we start with, there are like three parts. Uh, we're going to start with the horizon. Uh, as humans, we have the wonderful ability to realize where the horizon line fits. And we know that the Earth being a globe, that it's actually a huge stretched out sphere, uh, more of an elliptoid. But uh, to us in our normal everyday life, it's just that band of the horizon. And this is what we're going to use as a tool. And we're going to connect, we're going to pick a point on this. This is our train track that we're starting. And if we can anchor it here, we can anchor it here. But let's best say, let's put it right in the middle for drawing sake. And then we have a diagram showing that the horizon line is continuous, even if we don't see it. Like if, it's, if a mountain is there, make an imaginary horizon line and that, or a very thin lead horizon. That will help you in constructing things. Look down at your feet and you will see the track. Okay, so we, he's got the track laid in. We've got the horizon line. And now we're adding the person to it. And you can see one of the rules I mentioned in another video was that the eye level should be where your eyes are placed on figures. So that you always have the artist going on the tracks, his eye levels is going to match the horizon line, which gives you a feeling that you are equal as the artist drawing the man walking. You are equal and actually looking. So as an artist and illustrator, you are kind of controlling what the view of the person of the viewer. Here, the horizon and the eye level become one thing. So we're all meeting at this apex. And if you were to sit down on this track, you would find that your eye level has lowered. The distance and the horizon appears lower to be able to meet this change in eye level. Uh, so if you, if you brought the eye level differently, then you get that different view. Likewise, if, if you take the eye level and you're going above it, you'll get this downward looking view like an airplane. The height of the eyes becomes an important factor in freehand drawing. Here are some good remembrances. We use perspective drawing a brick so that it appears as a solid object. The horizon that is distant line where the earth and the sky seem to meet. The vanishing point is a place at the bottom horizon where the rails of the tracks appear to meet. The horizon is the height of your eyes, no matter where you are above the ground. And the eye level is the height of your eyes, no matter where you are. Let's look at the eye level and its relationship to perspective drawing. Have an interior scene we start out with. This is one of our projects for interiors. Uh, same thing occurs inside a building as it would out in the landscape. The eye level marked on the wall could be uh, your chosen, but it's also the horizon level. If the horizon level, we can see through this window, we get a little peek of it, lets us know that that horizon line still exists, even though we're not able to see it at the moment. The eye level was hit on the middle bar, so we assume that the person is sitting down. And this is the sight we see, because if, if we were eye level, we might be right up here.
Objects that we draw in two classes, the ones that are above and the ones that are below, the line indicates the eye level. But we try, uh, usually starting out, we always stay in, in the middle. And then several illustrations are given of lower water level. He's sitting down, so here's the eye level of the intended, but our person is sitting. So this makes a change depending on where your eye is looking at is what view you'll get. Here you can see the top of the dock, or you'll see the bottom. Let's read the end of the things to remember. The horizon is shown by a straight line across your drawing, no matter what. If it's not, if it's the mountains in front of it, if it's in a room, assume there is the horizon. And then onward to parallel lines as we see them, parallel lines related to one point perspective. Uh, one point perspective, everything is vanishing, including trees, including palms, uh, and roadway. Knowing that the rails are parallel, right? So we know they're parallel and they'll never do this, uh, but if this happens as a, as a condition of seeing right they never touch but there is a point where with our eyesight that we see them and and imagine them touching or at least experience that they are touching but they actually are not the two rails of a track are always the same distance when two two or more lines always remain the same distance they are called parallel lines in a perspective drawing we do not actually draw these lines parallel and why don't we do that? Because we want to create that optical illusion. Okay, and then it shows how with his view, he's, he's taking these lines, but our binocular view, we're going to follow that vanishing point to create this view uh, because we're looking in one place. And so in a sense, we're kind of focusing our eyes if we always have a focus, then we create this convergence. If we do not have a focus, then this could be an orthographic drawing, which is a true drawing. You would have something like this. A true orthographic drawing you can measure from. You can kind of measure from this, but it may not be accurate as the distortion moves. But there is a way to measure things, generally speaking. Parallel lines are two or more lines that extend in the same direction and remain the same distance apart. And, but now we can start to see the construction. If we take our ruler and just hold it on that center, we can start to move it around the page to create different kinds of layouts. But everything originating from here and drawn outward. A good example of Upright lines is a forest of straight trees. Going back to the forest appears small. So you can just make a flat front should you choose. And this is what we're trying to create a picture of. We're imagining ourselves standing on the tracks and with that one point perspective and a drawing line of sight. I'm saying here that you could actually draw off of a window or a window box or you can trace a picture and, and it would have the same result. And they did this in the Renaissance when they were experimenting. Locating the point at eye level, which is comfortable to us as a viewer to, to locate eye level and, and make things as we see them in real life. There's a height line, a width line, and a length line to three-dimensional objects. Locating the point at eye level. Okay, so you could place the bricks and leave them out to create the vanishing point. Same as tracks, you can use just, it could be anything, but the lines always lead backwards. It could be a house. And there we'll get our first glimpse at creating this drawing and creating uh, it could be these two points that vanish to the distance will help us render uh, this house, even though 
This may be off the paper. So this is suggesting this might be the paper and off here are the points. Any photograph of a building or room can be used for this experiment. And you, you could take photographs pre that you might see in a magazine, newspaper, or your own photographs and start to lay out lines based on what you see, what you're actually seeing in the photograph. And we're getting a, a look at the, if you were to add two vanishing points, right now it's just the one, and it's sending that brick, but, but two vanishing points are created by this a set of parallel lines at two ends. And that's the two-point perspective, which is the topic for another class, as this week we're focused on the one-point perspective of both the exterior showing the train track and then the interior showing we're going to do an interior elevation and we'll return again to talk about two and three point perspective